Hi, this is David Shedd from EasternSlopes.com, and today I'm here to show you how to lube your bicycle chain with paraffin. Very few people know that actually paraffin is one of the best bike chain lubricants you can get. Um, it is higher efficiency, it actually provides less friction than most of the expensive bike lubes you can get. Um, and it lasts a whole lot longer. The problem is it's a pain in the neck to apply because you have to apply it while it's molten. And again, when I'm talking paraffin wax, I'm talking good old the stuff you buy at, at um, Shaw's, Hannaford, wherever your local grocery store is. Uh, you make candles with it, use it for canning, whatever. And the real key to doing this is to have something to melt the wax in that's easy to work with. And I picked up a little mini crock pot at uh, Goodwill and I don't think I've ever been in a Goodwill store that didn't have at least one of these because everybody ends up with them and can't figure out what to do with them. But they're perfect for this use. So what you want to do is get your chain off your bike and get it clean. However you want to do that, whatever degreaser you want to use, uh, whatever method is fine. Um, make sure that it has plenty of time to dry. You don't want to put it into the paraffin with solvent still on it. And then you take your melt and paraffin and this is really difficult, watch carefully. You put the chain in it. Yep, that was it. Literally, it's as simple as that. And what will happen is you let that sit in there and you'll actually see bubbles if you look down in um, for a little bit of a period of time and that's the air coming out because what you're trying to do with a paraffin is a bike chain is plates with rollers sandwiched between them and you want that paraffin to get into the space between the roller and the pin that comes through and lube that space and that'll do a couple things for you obviously the lube gets in there it stays in there, it's very durable. It also keeps other stuff from getting in there, contaminants that get in there that are going to damage the rollers um, and wear your chain out faster. So you've got sort of a double, uh, double advantage from doing that. Um, and basically, what I've done now is just, and I'm going to do this a little bit faster. I would normally let this sit a little bit longer. I don't know that I need to, but on principle I tend to do that. And then, you need to have some place to hang the chain up and let it drip as it dries. And I have, and I'll show it to you once I've hung it up here, a, uh, a little, just a little, um, well it's like this, a little, I've got a little pick set that you can get. You can pick them up at Home Depot or wherever. Um, and little right angle picks are really handy for working with things like this because you can reach in, you can grab the chain through one of the gaps and lift it up and out. And let as much of it drain off as reasonably makes sense. You don't want to hold on to it forever because it's a pain in the neck. And then you just lift it up and you stick it onto your whatever you're choosing. And you, you know, I use these things, but you could just as easily have a stick of some sort that uh, the, uh, the chain can hang over and dangle. And you can see what I've got is the, this is that little pick. And I just have it clamped to on a shelf here. And I have a piece of cardboard underneath that uh, catches the dripping, so I don't mess up my bench too much. And um, then you just let it dry. Now, one thing that you might want to consider doing while you're waiting for it to dry is metal is microporous. Uh, even though metal is fairly smooth, if you put a microscope on it, you'll see gaps and pits and things like that. So one thing that's really good to do at the same time is take your cassette, and clean your cassette in advance so that, again, it's ready just like you do with your chain. And then take a brush, and I use, this is a, what's called a chip brush. You go to any painting store and they're probably a dollar, give or take. Looks an awful lot like a basting brush you might use in your kitchen. Um, I promise you we never use the same brush for basting that we do for working with the paraffin. Um, but I can honestly say I have used these for basting. And just, what you want to do is, if you take your cassette, that's nice and clean, and you paint on all through it the paraffin, and that dries on. Then when you run your chain over it, and that will basically sort of beat the paraffin. The paraffin will have melted into those little gaps, and it'll beat the paraffin in more, and it'll help keep your cassette cleaner longer, which, especially where, since, as it happens to be right now, we're coming up on winter riding, which is filthy and nasty, um, makes it a whole lot easier to clean your, your cassette and keep everything working afterwards. And you just Dip your, dip your brush into the paraffin, and literally it's that easy. Just brush it on. Nice and goopy. 
And as I said, you don't have to clean it off. That's one of the wonders of this is that just as soon as you put the chain on, you start running the chain. It's going to be a little ratchety at first um, because of all this gunk that's in the way. The chain itself, when it finishes uh, drying, will have um, will have gunk in it. Uh, you know, all the all the paraffin. When you put it on, it'll be stiff. It'll be difficult to work. Um, but then once you get on the bike and you spin it a few times, the paraffin will come off, and then you'll have. We tip. I typically find that my chain lube lasts for, depending on the weather circumstances, um, often a month, more than a month. You can tell when it's starting to come out. You'll start hearing the chain being noisy. Your chain will be very, very quiet with paraffin, typically, uh, if you have a, a you know, reasonably good chain line and have your derailleurs aligned correctly. Um, but just taking it and putting the paraffin on will be smooth and slick, and it's wonderful. It's very, you know, it's, it, feels, it feels very professional. And um, then when it starts to get a little ratchety, a little, little noisy, um, you'll know that it's time potentially to uh, either use another lubricant for a little while and just add some on if you're lazy, or take the thing off, clean it, lube it again. Obviously, every time you take it off, check the chain, get a chain checker that determines whether the wear is um, appropriate or not, because you, if, it's, if it gets to be too much wear, you don't want to put it back on your bike because it'll damage your cassette. And that's the last thing you want to do because those things are a whole lot more expensive than chains. So that's the process. And this thing is already about hmm, starting to dry. It's starting to st I can feel it starting to stiffen up a little bit. Uh, these links, you know, they don't move easily, and that means that it's almost ready to use. So another 10 or 15 minutes, I can put this back on my bike, spin it around, take it out for a ride, and I'm good to go for a month or more. It's that easy. So again, the big key to the whole thing is clean chain, and something to melt and keep the wax molten in. You know, you can't put it in a pan and melt it and then bring it out and it's hardening at the same time. Uh, a crock pot, mini crock pot, is, in my experience, the best way to do it. So, that's it. Hope you take this tip and I hope you can use it. It will make your bicycling easier and um, it actually the facts are, because it's a more efficient lubricant, it'll actually make you a little bit faster. So, hey, free speed. Can't complain. Again, this is David Shedd from easternslopes.com, and we'll see you out there.